special delivery with mayonnaise. Hi folks, welcome. In the last episode, I installed a new plywood subfloor and repaired the roof framing in my 1973 Shasta camper trailer. And in this installment, I'm going to focus on putting up new ceiling panels and doing a little bit of interior painting. The first ceiling panel I want to install is this rearmost piece, but before I put it up, there are a few things that I need to attend to. Quite a bit of the trailer's electrical system passes through the roof, so I need to ensure that any wiring that goes above the ceiling panel that I'm about to install is properly connected. For this particular panel, all that I have to worry about is a wire that comes up from the rear, goes to a running light, and then continues toward the front of the trailer. I've verified that it's connected and in good condition. I also need to reinstall this corner trim piece. I'm reusing the original plastic, but I've replaced the wood that it attaches to. And the last thing I want to do before installing this ceiling panel is add a little bit more insulation. It'll help us keep comfortably cool or toasty warm whether we're in North Dakota or Death Valley, irrespectively. This is 3 quarter inch width rigid styrofoam insulation. It's sold in 4 foot by 8 foot sheets and I'm going to cut it with a rusty kitchen knife. What's that? Yes, that is a brand new Troy built lawnmower that I got for $30 at Lowe's. Needs work. But that's for another time and another episode. I've marked the correct width on the insulation and now I'll try to cut it. Not a perfect cut, but that'll do, pig. Okay, I've got my piece cut. Let's see how it fits up here. Pretty good. Now I'll just cut a couple more for these two bays. I'll tell you, that looks pretty good. First class, first class, all the way, Jenny's Garage. Now that I have these three pieces of styrofoam in place, I can cut and install the first ceiling panel. Okay, I've got my first section of ceiling cut and it's ready to be installed. I cut it just a little bit wider than the actual distance between these two rails because I need the panel to slide into these grooves. Hopefully, I can bow it in just enough that it can fit in there without a lot of trouble. I forgot about it earlier, but I want to put a 12 volt light right here above the dinette. So I've got some wires running down through here, and I've also drilled a hole through the ceiling panel for them to pass through. So to put this ceiling together, I'll apply some liquid nails on the rafters. Now hopefully I can get this in position before the glue dries. Oh, there's a wire nut on this one. Bigger than the hole I drilled. Uh, what do I do? It's not a wire nut, it's a crimp. A wire nut I could just twist off. Okay, I'll say that's in there. Now let's get some screws in it before it falls down. Just between you and me, I've been feeling a little bit overwhelmed with this project. The wet weather is coming and I need to get it finished and it seems like there is no end in sight. But having this first piece of ceiling paneling in place it makes me feel better, it gives me some strength, it motivates me, we can do this. I'm getting ready to install this next ceiling panel, but before I do that, I want to talk a little bit about the trailer's interior electrical. 
The Shasta has two separate electrical systems. It has a 110 volt AC circuit, which is this wire right here. That's for plugging into local infrastructure. And it also has a 12 volt electrical system, which are these two wires right here. That's for onboard battery power. The AC circuit starts here and goes up into the roof. Then it goes to a nice little light here above the kitchen counter. From there, it goes over to a light here by the door, and then it crosses over and finally terminates to a light right here on the other side of the trailer. The 12 volt system is very similar. The wires go up into the roof here, from there they go to a light, they continue on to another light, more in the middle of the trailer, and then I added these two wires which are going to go to a nice little light over here above the dinette. Doom de doom doom doom, doom de doom 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 doom. <laughs> I probably shouldn't be cutting toward myself with a sharp knife, especially considering this particular leg has already endured a fair amount of torture. See that scar? This is the result of a very intense circumstance involving a circular saw. Let me know if you want to hear the tale. It's about four minutes long. Anyway. Back to responsible cutting. I've got the insulation in and the panel cut. Now I need to drill some holes for the wires to go through. I hope these are in the right spot. Okay, let's see about this. Now we're going to start by putting the, this side in like this, look where the front of it is. Just push the plywood so it goes into that groove. Now, tricky part, don't let go of that because we need to bow it down. It's sufficiently bowed. Yeah, that side must be shorter. What do you think? Gotta take it down and redo it. Okay, let's try this again. This is a new piece of wood. I don't need to town special for this. Okay, work on getting the front into that groove. Yeah, let's start with that. <laughs> okay, so now we'll put some screws in here before the glue dries. So I drilled the holes for these wires that we were pulling on right where the rafters are. That way I'll be able to take out the wire and put a screw there. Okay, it feels really good to have that piece installed. Now it's time to move on to the last panel. Before I place this final ceiling panel, I need to install this corner trim piece. The wall slides into one of these grooves and the plywood slides into the other. So I'll put this up here. 
One thing I didn't mention earlier is this little mistake I made right here, but that's okay. It'll be hidden behind a lovely kitchen cabinet. The trim piece is in place. Let's try to put up this panel. Keep the pressure here, right here, up. pointed out I forgot the glue and I'm not taking this back down so what I'll do as a compromise is pre-drill the holes for the screws and inject just a little bit of glue in each one works for me of the ceiling panels are installed. I actually finished that up late yesterday. I was proud of my work so I rested easy last night. But then when I came out this morning I found something less than desirable. The days have been getting shorter, the nights have been getting cooler which means an increase in overnight condensation. Some of which unfortunately has found its way into my beautiful new trailer. This isn't catastrophic because this small amount of moisture will dry up within a couple of hours and I plan on painting the walls anyway, but it does mean that I need to take decisive action. I'll go down to Wally World and buy a large tarp and from this day forward I will cover the Shasta every night to prevent any further water intrusion. But despite the moisture, my spirits are not dampened. Today we're going to paint the interior of the trailer. But before I paint, I want to do a little bit of prep work. I'm not going to fill all of these screw holes because a lot of them are going to be covered by fixtures and cabinets, but I do want to sand down the ends of the staples that poked through when I was putting the framing together. So here's Jennifer on the orbital sander about to make short work of the small pokies. <laughs> Jennifer has finished sanding the rough spots and I've caulked all of the corners. It's time to paint. The first thing we need to do is a primer coat. Now only a sensible and well-adjusted citizen buys primer. What I do is whenever I go in to Home Depot or Lowe's, I keep an eye out at the paint department because oftentimes they will have marked down mist-tinted paint available for sale. This is paint that a customer had the paint department mix up to a certain color and then for whatever reason ran away without paying for the paint. So the paint department is stuck with it. This one for instance was $27 originally. I got it for five bucks. I got a whole pile of this stuff out by the side of the house for just this type of occasion. So let's pop it open, pour it in the pan and get started. That should do nicely. I'll start by brushing the corners, then I'll roll the flats. I don't buy masking tape either. We are now rolling. I want to be really careful of the ceiling because I think I'm going to stain it. I don't want to stain it with paint though. Okay, we're done with the primer. How do you like my lovely blue tarp? Now it's time to lay down a nice coat of Glidden Pebble White Semi-Gloss. You're rather a good paintress. And here's how it looks after two coats of paint. It's good enough for me, so the next step is to stain the ceiling. But unfortunately, we're out of time for right now, so that will have to wait until next time. Thanks for watching.